Hey guys, welcome back to Golden Reviewer. So here I have the iPhone 13 Pro Max with Apple A15 chip and the Moto Edge X30 with Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chip. So this will be two of the major flagship iOS of 2022. So today we are going to test the Genshin Impact gaming performance of these two devices or so-called SOCs. Okay, so before we start the test, Let's make it clear that uh, both devices are tested under the same ambient temperature of about 25 degrees and uh, I've let them cool down properly before starting the test. As you can see here, both devices are below 30 degrees so that the fair test is as fair as possible. Okay, and uh, since these are both flagship devices, we'll actually run the test at highest graphics settings available to them, right? Uh, so here you can see the graphics settings are, I think they are mostly the same except the visual effects, right? So the highest is just not available on Android, but we've set everything to highest possible to push the devices to their limits. So the way we do the test is the same as we've done before. It will be a 10 minutes gameplay with real-time FPS as well as power consumption at the bottom of the footage so that uh, you can check out the full gameplay footage or otherwise you can skip to the end where we'll measure the device temperature after the gameplay and of course I'll also show you the FPS and power consumption record and give you my conclusion of these two devices right so without further ado let's go
是一位奉行，定期化身，是我九叔军长，禁止接触。Right now we finished the 10 minutes gameplay and uh, let's measure the temperature of both devices. So the hottest spot on both devices are at a similar position, just uh, at the top of the body near the cameras. I think that's where the CPU, the SOC is. And the iPhone is actually cooler at 45.4 degrees at, at its hottest spot, while the Moto Edge X30 is at 48 degrees. Right now, let's look at the FPS record of the iPhone. The performance is pretty decent. Uh, it held well for about five minutes before it starts to throttle and we see some significant frame drops. So for the first five minutes, we only see some minor frame drops when we are actively uh, fighting the monsters. So the average FPS 57 for the first five minutes. And then after that, we see some significant frame drops because of thermal throttling and uh, the average FPS for the uh, later half for the other five minutes is around 48. And then for power, we also see the power before and after the uh, throttling starts separately. So for the first half, the device uses on average 5.2 watts of power and for the later half, it uses about 4 watts of power. So the efficiency is actually pretty good. Now for the 8 Gen 1, however, it's not as good. It could only hold a, a rather stable 60 FPS for about one minute before it start to overheat and drop frames. So for the first minute, we see an average FPS of about 58, which is pretty nice. But then after that, uh, the average FPS for the rest nine minutes actually dropped to about 46.8 which uh, is not that good. You can feel some starting from there. And then when it comes to power, that's where the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 underperforms. It just uses way more power when delivering the same performance as Apple A15. Here we see for the first minutes, the average power is as high as 9 watts, which is just way too high for a smartphone. And then even after the device starts to throttle for the later nine minutes, the average power is still more than 7.7 watts. And that is what I've been trying to tell you. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 performance is okay. It's actually rather nice, but efficiency is actually more important for a mobile device like a smartphone. And uh, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 just does not have very good efficiency. Okay, so that's all for today's comparison video. I hope it helps you. Uh, if you like the video, please give me a thumb up and also subscribe to my channel and uh, share the video to your community or friends. Right? Thanks for watching and see you next time.